The market was down today. It opened higher, but the Dow was down 530 points at the close, 1.4%. As Doug Flynn joins us, certified financial planner, co-founder at Flynn Zito Capital Management and president of the Long Island KISS fan club. So <laughs> good to have you on as always. 300 mil is not bad, right? But uh, no. not bad at all for, for Gene Simmons. Yeah, so, it, it keeps, you know, it's part of their estate planning for sure is to cash right. out a little early and, and, uh, and, and let that live on. They'll probably have like, sanctioned mm -hmm. bands and then they license the uh the music and the revenue and it's all about also about like a team selling it later on for even more of a multiple but they'll someone else will manage it so that's what a lot of this is and gene also a big tax tips tuesday fan he watches that every week so they get, <laughs> he'll know what to do if he has Excellent. any big gains so <laughs> so the market goes down today i looked it was up and then it not only go down but the dow you know 500 points we have the big jobs report tomorrow what's um, mm -hmm. what's going on ahead of that do we know yeah, a little bit. The, um, the, the obviously concerned about what the numbers are going to look like tomorrow in terms of uh, how many jobs have been added. The expectation is 200,000, um, and that would be down from 275,000 from from last month. And you know, last week weekly jobless claims increased, so there's a little bit of that. Also, the inflation number, you know, it went from 3.7 in January to 3. I'm uh, not the inflation number, but the unemployment rate went from 3.7 to 3.9 in February, and you could get a 4% number, which we haven't had since November 2021 on unemployment. So the market's just like, let me uh, take a pause. And then you had uh, a Fed uh, president say that, you know, if inflation stays high, we're we may not cut this year, which we uh. were talking about yesterday. And so the market's just digesting all that right there at the end of the day. Tell them to keep their mouths shut for a while, and then uh, we won't have as many issues as these Fed presidents now. Um, okay, so that's fine. We had the weekly jobless claims. We showed that, which was, uh, you know, not great. It was at a nine-week high. But, I mean, that's still historically low. So that's the job situation. We'll see what we get uh, mm -hmm. tomorrow, right? All right. Speaking of jobs, this is an interesting story, kind of a bigger picture one I wanted to talk to you about. We've had this discussion um, on the network a couple of times. You know, Chris Cuomo's talked about it a lot on his show. This idea of trade school versus college, right? You're gonna, it's, it's becoming a bigger and bigger issue. I'll put up a Wall Street Journal head, headline to illustrate the point about how Gen Z is becoming the tool belt generation. They talk about how more young workers are going into trades as disenchantment with the college track continues and rising pay and new technologies kind of shine up the plumbing and electrical jobs. What do you make of this phenomenon, for lack of a better term? Well, it's interesting. I think some of the numbers are that out the gate, uh, the starting pay for the trades is about 22 percent higher than it is for professional and business services initially. Mm -hmm. Now, in the long run, those with a college degree in those areas do outpace in terms of income by about 13 percent. But you have to think about this and do the math. If you're starting four or five years later with your college degree right. and you're also carrying debt, on top of that, the math may not be as clear as it once was. And a lot of the Gen Z's are saying, you know, with AI, I don't know how much job security I have in some of those professional business services where AI is not going to unclog your sink. Doesn't so, that like, matter? That, right. But isn't the, the debt part is probably the most interesting variable in all of this. If, you know, mm -hmm. for some families, say, the, the, you know, if they're, for whatever reason, can have children that go to college and don't have debt, that's a much different situation. I mean, we're going to be totally 100 grand different. a year here pretty soon for college, the way things are going, already 80, oh, 90 grand in some spots, right? So if you it, come I, out of that with no debt, okay, it, fine, you went to college. But if you have all that debt, now that's a different conversation with the trades. Yes. And, and working with families all these years, a lot of them focus so much because we've been ingrained that we have to send our kids to college right. that, you know, that isn't for everybody. And they don't really want to know the math like they want to send their kid to the absolute best school the kid can get into, even if they got to go into hock for the rest of their life versus the appropriate school that isn't going to you know be mm -hmm. as costly. And maybe in the end, they end up far better off. So there's all of that that you have to bake in. And in the end, I think some of some of the younger people are saying, you know, I don't need all that and that four or five extra years of income at a higher amount. How much of a head start do I get? Maybe I could buy some real estate. Maybe I can get an even further head start before people are even out of college. So all that has to be baked in. Really interesting discussion, at least, that maybe we would have been dismissive of even just a few years ago. But you shouldn't be in now. Just to think about your individual situation, to your point. Last story. This is, uh, this is a Bloomberg headline on Apple, exploring home robotics. So a robot in your home. Play, apparently Apple's playing around with this. They don't know exactly what direction they're going to go or what uh, form this is going to take. But is this going to be a right. big thing? Would you bet big on uh, robotics in the home? Well, I would if the uh, innovations we've had 
were more than just the Roomba in the last 20 years. That's basically <laughs> all that we've really had. Um, I often think about Roomba. this. It's, it's hey, do you know who this is? Oh, I was looking at Tim Cook, but now I'm looking at some oh. drawing that you made. What is yeah, that? Yeah, that's... See. That's that? Rosie. That's Rosie from the Jetsons. Oh, from the Jetsons. So, well, that's yes. Yeah. So if that's what it looks like, yeah. and that took the Jetsons took place in 2062, so we're getting close. Then maybe we have something. But Apple has said they're going to. They previously said we're going to be in auto, we're going to be in the home, and we're going to be in mixed reality. Well, they killed the car, so that's gone. The mixed reality. Yeah. They have that headset. I don't know who's going to buy that. So now we're focused on the home. That's probably something they could make some inroads in. And 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 make the you know the the change from more than fifty percent of their revenue being the iPhone. They do need to do something. There is some pressure to find what the next big thing is. Maybe this is. Hopefully they can they can figure that mm -hmm. out. But I think if they do, things look really well for yeah, them for like sure. The Jetson get somebody to do the dishes or the laundry or whatever it is <laughs> uh, that might help out. Um, it's interesting. Like uh, like all of our discussions, at least to us, Doug. Thank you. Uh, talk Thanks. to you again next week, Doug Flynn.